Bunch of below last night. I'm probably gonna lead off with it just to get it out of the way. And that is template for Danny Tran to make me a header. He asked for a piece to uh, show him where the Bunch of below last night. Yeah. Bunch of hookers and blow. You're a good cat. You're a good bad cat. Making biscuits. You make a morning biscuits. Just kind of give him, give him, uh, give him an idea as he makes the header what kind of room he's working with. So what I'm going to do, take this round bar, probably go from here, bend to 90, where the hood line is, bend another 90, put a T-bar here, so uh, I'll, I'll bolt uh, a boss here, a boss here crossbar and then I'll weld it in there. there so it'll bolt to that and be stationary and then off of this I'll probably run a bar forward and probably follow this inner fender probably like that just to give him an idea where that is so he can come over of, up top if he wants and come back in. Uh, I think that'll give him enough idea what he's working with here. So let me go get on the lathe, whip up a couple little bungs. Right. That'll locate this bolt nice and tight on the ID and give me some meat to weld to. Every time you use a caliper or any measuring device, make sure you clean off um, the faces of it and check your zero. See, that's why you check your zero. Especially these fabrication ones because there's always some dirt or something in them. Always check your zero. Just get in the habit. Look at that. 306. It's really short. That. Oh yeah, see how wobbly that is? Honestly, I want a little more speed. So we're on probably B1, 70, 360. Go to two. Okay, 
they got the end squared up. I'm just going to go straight to this size. I'm not going to pilot hole it or anything weird. if I actually tighten the drill. I'm not going to use the parting tool, I'm just going to do this in the bandsaw. Hmm, just happens to be the same size. Look at that nice tight fit. So let's do. card there but I uh, just cleaned up these surfaces on that sander chamfered the ID put them back in the lathe and knocked the edge off the, the OD and now real quick um, I found this helps a lot when fabricating I'm gonna toss them in the sand blaster blast them real fast and uh, that'll make them way easier to weld to nice clean Nice clean welds, knock all the oils and stuff off of them. Alright, so there you go. Again, that's just a lot easier to weld to, a lot easier to deal with. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pull the head off here and basically use it as a um, fixture to hold my bungs. Um, and you can see here I'm bolting them down that way they're held solid and I can go ahead and get this t-bar tacked in here now once they're tacked I can go ahead and pull it out and uh, since this isn't a critical piece I'm gonna weld it not bolted down um, there's gonna be minimal movement and I'm not too worried about that anyway Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and just take a piece of bar stock and basically this is going to mimic the hood and so now I can at least use that to take some measurements off of and uh, go ahead and figure out where my top bin needs to be here. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to the vise and I'll clamp it right at that line you just saw me draw. And I'm going to use a map gas torch. It's a little hotter in propane, and the key here is to localize the heat right at where you want the bend. That way your bend is nice and sharp. There you go. You can see. Nice, sharp, 90-degree bend. Dunk this in some water, get the heat out of it real quick so we can keep working. All right, back on the car. I can kind of determine. So I bent... The 90 degree bend I bent a little long so that way I can just cut a little off and drop it. Um, the key with fabrication is you always kind of want to sneak up on your measurements. Um, 
that way it's uh, it's a lot easier to take material off and put it back on. Now I've determined my other 90 degree again in the vise. Localize heat with the map gas. And then since I've already got a bend here, I'm going to go ahead and look down the edge and make sure I get that bend on the same plane. Back into the water, take the heat out, we can keep working. If this was a critical piece I was making, I probably wouldn't be dunking it in water, but since it's just a template, I can go ahead and quench it like that. The reason being is that when you quench it, it actually hardens it. Um, and depending on the part you're making, you might not want a very hard part. Uh, it can be brittle. Uh, but for what I'm doing, it really isn't important. Now, uh, now I'm over in the car again, and like I said, leave all your, all your measurements long. It's really easier to cut stuff off than it is to put it back on. So over to the bandsaw, we'll go ahead and cut that uh, other side. And back in the car, we can uh, go ahead and tr start trying to finalize this so I can get it tacked to that T-bar. And uh, you can see here, I'm, I'm going to flip it around either way because honestly I just want to see which way kind of fit better. And the one way fit a little better than the other, so I just went ahead and, and did it that way. One side was a little shorter. Now I'm just going to kind of determine my angle and where it kind of sits on that T-bar. You can see it's a little closer to this forward bolt and I'll go ahead and mark that with a marker so that way whenever I go over to the welding table I know where that's going to need to sit. And also note the angle of the cylinder head versus the angle of that bar. It's not straight 90 degrees so whenever I get over on the welding table you're going to see I'm going to pick up on the, uh, on the other edge to get it uh, to get that angle correct when I tack it. And again, since this is not a critical part, this is just a template, kind of, there's a lot of guessing going on here, not a lot of measuring. So you can see I'm holding up the one edge to try to get that angle I was talking about. Two, two light tacks, I'll go back over to the car, double check that it fits right, and then I'll weld it up solid. It's always good to tack first, check your fitment before you go welding. It's, it's, you want to just sit there and weld it up, but take your time, tack it, check your fit, then move forward. It'll save you a lot more time in the long run. You can see I'm not even going to bolt it to the head. I'm basically just going to kind of sit there and look at it and make sure it's all good. All good. So we'll go back to the welding table. water, quench that so we can move forward, keep on working. Okay, I'm going to start working on that inner fender piece I spoke of and I'm going to use the frame table here to kind of put a curve in it. You can see I stick it in there and just kind of bend the, bend the curve. Alright, now back over to the welding table, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tack that uh, inner fender curve and we'll check that fitment as well before we weld it up. Fabrication is a lot of, uh, of double checking your measurements, double checking your fit before you move forward. Just be patient with it, it pays off in the end. Okay, now that I've got that inner fender kind of uh, reference. Now I'm going to go down to the frame rail. Danny wanted uh, some references on that frame rail. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, start kind of on a separate piece from the piece I've been working on and kind of bend a tight 90 on it to reference that rail as it runs down the back of the car. 
So here's that first tight 90 just to kind of show the depth of the rail itself. Again in the vise, localized heat right where I want it, bend a tight 90. If this was a, if this was a piece that held anything on the car, it wasn't just a simple template, I would probably slide a piece of tube over this and localize that bend even tighter. But even doing it just this way where I'm not really localizing so much on that bend, localizing that heat in just one spot does a really nice job. Back on the car, another quick measurement of the width. And now I'm gonna measure the length. Basically, I'm just gonna kind of run the length till that downpipe that you can see there. And uh, I did not did videotape, but I already made a fixture that slides into my downpipe and bolts to the engine block. And this is another piece of this template that I gave to Danny to show him basically where the header needs to exit the um, engine bay to hit my exhaust and to be pointed in the right direction to run down the firewall. Okay, there you go. Got it cut. Got the 90. There, it's just a, it's basically just kind of a flat rail there, so I don't really have to do a lot more to it than that. And I'm gonna run it down the, full, the, the edge of that rail. I can even just sit it there as you see. And now I'll just kind of make a small piece to connect to the inner fender reference point. back to the car one last time here and we got that last little piece connect the dot from the inner fender to the frame rail reference and sorry the GoPro died here but uh, we went ahead and got it all welded up added a brace in the back reference that rail reference that inner fender and now he basically knows what my engine bay looks like he can come out here and just get it to go into my downpipe just right and uh, I'm very excited about all this it's gonna be really cool to see what he can come up with and give it one of these mark it off the to-do list and uh, yeah be cool to see what Danny can do with a all-motor rear-wheel drive drag race header big tube short all the rpm Like